Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be doing a first impressions. This isn't going to be a super in-depth review, but I'm going to do the best that I can, do a couple of looks with the new Hindash Mono Chromance collection. I'm really excited to play with this. It looks absolutely stunning. So if you want to hear my thoughts, then just keep watching. So this is the first full-on makeup review video that I am filming in my new setup. A little bit of an echo, I apologize. We're gonna put a rug down, I just, we haven't. There's a lot of things we gotta work out. I just wanted to sit down and play with some new makeup. So that is what we're doing. I ordered the new Mono Chromance Press Pigment Palette from Hindash. I also ordered the Lip Tone and I picked up the Ultra Matte Lipstick and of course the Boy Tears as well. There's a few things that I didn't pick up from the collection like the Rest in Roses, kind of like, I believe it's a lip balm and the Eye Tone I did not pick up which I am regretting but if you are interested in this collection I highly highly suggest that you watch Hindash's video. He will make you want to buy it so maybe don't watch it, but it made his collection make so much more sense and you can see all of the thought that was put behind this collection and the intention. Nobody can explain this collection better than Hindash, so definitely check out his video. I am just, as a regular consumer, gonna put this on my eyes and tell you what I think. Prior experience with the brand, I do have the Beautopsy palette. I'll be honest, it's not one that I use a ton just because of the size of my collection, but it really is a great everyday, all you need with the basics palette. And this one I was super excited about. First of all, I love the pink sleek packaging because it's like a pastel spring dream. So we'll start off with the Mono Chromance palette because that's the most exciting part. I did, by the way, order this obviously off of the Hindash website. It does ship from Dubai, so it took a while to get to me here in Florida. It took almost two weeks, not quite. I actually ordered this when I was on the auto train to move down to Florida. It took a little bit, but it's coming from a far place, so that's fine. The palette itself is 100% vegan, made in Italy, and is a and has a 24 month shelf life. And here is the packaging. It's a very sturdy kind of cardboard, I guess is the way to put it. And I love that it's pink and you have the name of the palette written along the side. You have a long mirror and then here is the palette itself. It is absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, ignore my nails. I need to get them done. <laughs> Not that I ever get my nails done, but I feel like I need to, so I've been trying to grow them out. But anyways, here's the palette. You can see very beautiful pastel tones, and Hindash just kind of claim to fame with his eyeshadow palettes in the two that he's launched is this ombre blend, which I think is so beautiful. Apparently, it's really difficult to create, but... Essentially, when you're looking at the palette, you can kind of see these as two different colors, a lighter shade and a darker shade. And then, of course, you can mix the two in the middle to get kind of a mid-tone shade. I haven't even swatched these. I'm going to do the best that I can. This is a difficult palette to swatch because of that blend. But let's try it out, shall we? Also, something I forgot to note because I'm all out of my element right now. This palette is $70. It's a luxury priced palette. We are gonna get started with Alter Ego. So we have a bone shade right here and then a little bit of a medium cooler taupe, which Heen Dash actually recommended using this to contour your nose. I'm gonna try that, I'm so curious. Match made. These are a little bit warmer. And I'm sorry if these swatches are terrible. I cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't have my monitor yet. So this is what Hindash described as kind of like a mustard shade. And then we have a little bit of a, I wouldn't say warm brown, but it's like a deeper brown. Okay, let's go into heavy petal next. So we have a lighter pink and a deeper pink. Definitely gonna try these out as a blush today. And you can see the two varying tones here. And then we have Heartthrob, which is almost like a mauve peach. Ooh, these are beautiful. These also could be used as like blushes. This is almost like an orangey peachy shade, which I think will look beautiful on medium complexions. Let's play with the fun colors here. I'm really excited. Antidote right here. You guys know what a purple fan I am. So let's see how these swap. 
definitely more sheer, which is not a bad thing, depending on how they build and blend. But I think this could be pretty friendly if you are afraid of bolder shades. And we have to give Forever Inked this crazy bluish teal shades a try. And you see when you go from one end to the other, there, there really is differences here. So these are swatching a little bit more faded, but just based on my experience with the previous formula, as well as watching Heen Dash and his style of makeup, this is done intentionally. Um, it makes blending a lot easier. It makes it more buildable. Keep in mind, Heen Dash is an artist. He kind of views it from that lens. So the ability to build and layer in his formula is the sole purpose but here are the initial swatches they look beautiful and soft but this is definitely one that hopefully is going to impress more on the eyes this is a palette that i felt the need to do a couple different looks for because not all of the shades are going to look super complementary with one another it is a monochromatic palette when you see this palette you're probably more inclined to stay within the same color family i just needed to do different looks I'm going to use a bit of the KVD concealer as my base here. This does cause eyeshadows to crease over time, so I don't recommend using this as a base. But I'm not wearing this look all day. I'm going to do a third look after this, so it's fine. I'm going to go straight into the goods, and we're going to play with the bolder colors here. Because I can't help it. I have to. So I want to start off with a little bit of heavy petal the lighter shade of the pink. And I'm going to blend this as our transition shade. Looks so beautiful, just like that. Very subtle. Let's see if we can build it. it is a building, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And then of course, if you wanna add more depth, go into the darker shade and I just realized like heavy petal, heavy is the lighter shade, petal is the deeper shade, and you can build it up even more, which is kind of neat. And you'll notice Heen Dash put these more neutral shades here. These are going to help neutralize the shades, brighten them, blend them out. Really well thought out. I love doing that with my shadows. So we have a great face here. My brushes look dirty, I swear. I cleaned them off a little bit. Forever is our next victim. I need to see how this pastel blue works. So it might be a little bit purpley since I'm mixing it with the pink. Actually, it's not doing a bad job of holding its own. Okay, nice. You can see though, these are a little bit more faint, which was intentional. You can always go in with a brightening base or a white base to get a little bit more oomph to it but I think the intention was kind of more of watercolor and then you can adjust as needed to get the intensity that you want. Inked is our next victim. I'm going to build up the depth out here and so it's not well blended right now but you can see that light to deep fade. I'm gonna take that first brush that we use that has the pink residue over it. We're gonna blend this out. I'm actually going to go back into match, which was that pink shade, and use that to help haze the whole look out. We must, must play with the purples. So I'm starting off with Dote, which is the darker purple, and I'm going to place this in the outer corner of the lid, and I'm going to build on that just a little bit, and it is building as I pack it on. The one thing with this formula, though, is I don't think you're going to get full opacity or, or intensity that is really kind of the trend with eyeshadows, but they're going to be a little bit more user-friendly. And like I said, kind of give that watercolor effect, but you can totally bring out the opacity based on the base that you use. Okay, and I'm flipping my brush. Let's get into the lighter shade. I'm just kind of looking. I want to touch up on the blue a little bit. So I'm brightening the blue shade, and then I'm using inked which is the darker blue shade. I'm not gonna say I love this look because I don't, but it was an interesting way to get to know the formula. I will say that. And I'm just kind of using whatever's left on my brush, just running it down here. I actually wanna mix all of the blue together. 
I did not get a ton of depth with this either, so keep that in mind. I know some of you were worried about how this palette would look on deeper skin tones. Obviously, I cannot speak from experience, but that would be a concern of mine as well. I would love to see somebody of a deeper complexion review this so that we could see, because I am quite curious. Let's play around with the other eye now. I want to play with Heartthrob right here, so we have more of like a peachy shade. I'm going to use this as my inner corner transition shade. So what is really neat about this palette is you can truly use one shade to get a really pretty multi-dimensional monochromatic look because you do have the lighter and deeper shades of them. This is really pretty and peachy. I can see this being incorporated into a lot of looks. It's a great base shade. And let's try and build up some of Throb. These shades are blending pretty seamlessly. See how this right here is a look in of itself if you use the lighter shade Heart all over the lid and then keep Throb out here. That's that very simple monochromatic look that you can get which makes this palette super easy to create looks with. Stunning. I'm going into Made right here to kind of add a little bit of depth. It's also going to neutralize this look a little bit, make it a little bit more wearable, if you will, for those of you who are neutral lovers. You see how that kind of toned down the brightness of Throb, so it's a little bit more wearable. I really like where this look is going. For funsies, let's put heavy all over the lid. I think that would be really pretty, and this instantly is awakening the eye. Gorgeous. I'm gonna take just a little bit more of Made kind of define out here. I love this look. This is a really simple wearable monochromatic eye right here. Something that I do need to play with before I do my final look is the Color Fluid in Boy Tears. This is a brand new formula, it's $25. Let's see, Deets on this, made in Italy. 18 month shelf life, vegan as well. Very simple, sleek packaging as expected. Here's what it looks like, let's swatch it. So based on what Hindash said in his video, it's intentionally not really supposed to have a base right here. It's just supposed to add a shimmer component really anywhere that you want it, on top of his shadows, on your face. Looks really beautiful. It looks quite fine. It has a champagne turn to it, but I can definitely see the color of my own skin tone underneath. So I want to try it on both eyes to see how it looks. You can also use it as like a highlight, which I will try in the next look straight onto my eyelid and this is a great addition to his line because his line is completely matte he does not have any shimmers yet in his eyeshadows so this is kind of that shimmer and it's supposed to be super universal it's supposed to hold the color underneath and keep the integrity of the look I think I applied too much. That looks a little crusty, so let me use my finger to kind of pat it out. And okay, that's much better. You can definitely see the pink underneath. So that definitely held the pink, but it certainly did brighten the lid and kind of add that champagne turn to it. But that is a nice way to add dimension to his shadows. Let's try again, just a little bit. This should be interesting. I don't know if this is going to hold the purple up well. Yeah, it's kind of reflecting pretty strongly against the purple base and kind of, in my opinion, took away a little bit of the purple, but you can certainly still see it. So it's not as purple as it would be if you put a purple shimmer over top, but you can see the purple seeping through, but it does look like you have a golden champagne shimmer kind of going through, but it does not feel heavy on the eyelid. It feels almost as lightweight as a powder really. It blended out super easy. The shimmer is quite fine, very subtle. So this was just experimental playing with colors. I'm gonna wipe off my eye makeup and we're gonna do like an official look that I'm gonna be excited about. So give me a moment. Now we're talking, I'm obsessed with this look. I think it's so pretty. Again, it just reminds me of watercolors. It's 
stunning. Now, obviously I wanted to play with the bolder colors. You can absolutely get neutral looks up here. You can tie it into the blush by putting this as your cheek color and then using this as your transition as well. He also has the Beautopsy palette if you are looking for something more neutral. For me, these are more so complementary tones to add to the bottom colors, which are more fun. So that's how I use the palette today. But you can absolutely just use these four colors to throw on for an everyday look. But let me show you how I got this look. And we will put boy tears on, but I wanted to start off with the matte beauty. So with a blinged brush E22, I'm starting off with petal and I'm going just a wee bit into heavy. I love being able to somewhat customize shades. And this is going to be the inner crease color right here. And I'm building that up because like I said, that first dip in, you will probably just get a sheer layer like that. Very pretty. And we'll be back with that shade to build. Next, I'm going into Dote, which is the dark purple. Again, get a wee bit into anti, but mostly the dark shade. And I am going to put this in the middle of the crease. I'm using a lot of natural sunlight today, so the sun is coming in and out. I'm sorry <laughs> if the lighting is changing. But if the sun goes down, you can actually see the color a little better anyways. So we have a beautiful blend from pink to purple. And then with a blinged brush E3, I'm going into inked, which is the dark blue. And I am stamping it in the outer corner of my crease, getting it onto the lid. That is okay. While I'm at it, I'm also going to run this along the outer half of my lower lash line. Light show. Okay, I'm taking a refer 16 brush and we're going into Forever, which is the lighter blue, and I'm going to use that to blend out the darker blue to kind of haze that out. I'm going to add more of the purple just like this, just to bring the purple back out into the look. I'm going to take a smaller brush. This is the Sonia G Soft Definer. I'm mixing these two and I'm putting it in the inner half of my lower lash line. I mean, this is kind of the look that I was going for in the very first look that I did in this eye, but I was more so playing with the colors. I wasn't very successful. So this is like the actual completed pretty version. Final step, we're going into anti and I'm just popping this all over the lid. It's gonna brighten everything up. And then I'm also gonna pop it like right down here as well. How pretty is that? I wanted to incorporate more of this palette on my face as well. I'm gonna go into ego and I'm gonna use that to contour my nose, which is what Hindesh said he loves to use this shade for. I'm just doing something rough, it ain't that serious. I just wanted to check the tone on this. And he said this would be a great sculptor shade for fair to medium skin tones. And I can definitely see that. I did a very terrible, messy job. <laughs> but yes, the tone is great for that. I'm also gonna sneak a little bit of that like right here. Because I used a very warm bronzer today. That kind of mimics a shadow. I just did like the tiniest bit. So yeah, that totally does work as a nose contour though, if you do a better job than me. <laughs> okay, and then blush though. We have to use this for blush. I'm going to mix heavy petal together and then I'm going to use a little bit of antidote to add a purple lilac element because yes, purples can be used as blushes. And I'm gonna focus this on the back of the cheek and that purple is gonna kind of cool down the cheek as well. So again, just mix these two and a little touch of antidote. <gasps> How pretty is this as a blush? And with these three rows right here, you really can truly customize the blush colors, which I love. For me, heavy petal is where it's at. Deeper skin tones, you're gonna love heartthrob, but you can mix them all. So pop this on, put a little bit on the nose. Absolutely gorgeous. And then, I mean, I don't want to put on boy tears because I love the all matte look, but for the purpose of testing, we will do it. So I'm gonna put just like the tiniest little dot in the inner corner and I'm going to blend it out. I don't know, I might put more, but you see how this really brightened up the eyes? It worked great as a highlight. You can just put it there for something subtle. I'm gonna put over more, but I'm gonna, ooh, that was too much. 
pat it on. I don't know that I love this for a cheek highlight. It's a little bit too metallic, which I think can be a bit unflattering, but I thought we'd try it. It can work, you know, if you forget your highlight or something, you can use this, but for me, I just prefer a powder highlight. But it does work, but I don't love it in that scenario. But it did work to add a little bit of highlight to the face if you need it, but I personally just prefer it on the eyelid. While Boy Tears does not have too much of a pigmented base, it definitely alters the lid. You can see it brightening, so just keep that in mind. So it's not like a true translucent shade, but it looks good, I'm not complaining. Okay, so here's the look before liner and lashes. I'm gonna pop those on and then we can play with the lip colors to finish off this video. Here is the look with a little bit of liner and lashes, really pulls everything together. Let's put on the lip products, starting off with the lip tone in the shade Hush. So this is the only shade I believe that he launched. It's the classic wooden packaging, just so that it's easily able to be sharpen, sharpenable, <laughs> sharpenable. Okay, let's just try it. Let me swatch it for you real fast so you can see the glide on this. Pretty smooth. It's not the smoothest, say like Pat McGrath or Charlotte Tilbury, but it's, it reminds me a lot of MAC, but maybe a touch creamier. Let's see. Very easy to apply, but definitely on the waxier side. I prefer that though. It gives me more control. Definitely a solid lip pencil. If I were to put it all over my lips, it wouldn't be comfortable like lipstick. It is a little bit more drying, but it certainly gets the job done. It's a pretty traditional lip liner formula. So it's nice, has a hint of warmth to it, gonna be very flattering on a lot of skin tones. I personally would prefer a formula like this when it comes to shaping the lips, not necessarily adding color because you have a lot of control. And it's a great color to shape the lips however you prefer. Okay, and then let's go into the lipstick. So he did launch two lip formulas. One is kind of like a rosy lip balm and then a matte lipstick. I kind of regret not getting the rosy lip balm. It looked really great, but the packaging is very sleek and simple. It's a snap closure. It's called Call Me Peaches. I'm very intrigued because it's matte. So we'll see, it's made in Italy. Doesn't have a scent to it. Ooh, really smooth application. Definitely that matte finish. I think I went a little crazy with my Cupid bow. <laughs> but wow, it's actually quite smooth. Here's how it looks up close. It's definitely a matte lipstick, so I wouldn't say I love this but it applied super duper smooth and it feels pretty comfortable actually, all things considered. So let me get myself together and I will zoom out and show you the final look. So here is everything put together. I absolutely love the look. Here are my final thoughts, starting off with the eyeshadow palette. This is a lovely palette. However, if you're looking for something extremely high pigment, this is not gonna be for you. I think this is more so beginner friendly because of how easily the shadows blend and how they are able to build, but you're never going to get anything crazy, intense, or bold with this palette, watercolors. That's the key word for this. So it just depends on what style of makeup you prefer, especially if you're not so comfortable with color. This actually is a great palette for that, especially since you can neutralize the colorful shades, but really great for springtime for those washes of colors as well. So I think this is a really great trendy palette. The Boy Tears, I like it. I mean, I don't think it's something I'm going to use a ton. I can see the versatility in it, and I really do like how lightweight it feels on the eyelids, but it wasn't something necessary in my collection, but the formula was very well done. The lip tone, gorgeous, gorgeous color. I mean, not something that I necessarily needed. Again, I have an abnormal collection size, but I really liked the color of it. Very nice and easy to apply. It's kind of a more old school lip liner formula, which I'm happy about. So it's great for sculpting the lips. And from what I can tell thus far, I will let you guys know about wear time. This matte lipstick is unusually comfortable for being a matte lipstick and it has a very easy glide. Very typical for an Italian lipstick formula from what I've noticed and what I've tried on the market. 
So honestly, this is a really solid lipstick. I'm quite impressed. And the two together definitely work in harmony. That's a word that Hindish used a lot in his video is that everything needed to be harmonious. So there we have it, you guys. That was my review of the Hindish Monochromance collection overall. Really, really solid. I apologize for the echo as I am still getting everything together with my filming setup, but just one video. <laughs> I'm gonna put the rug down this evening. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts on this collection. Did you pick anything up? And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.